Okay, hey everybody, welcome to a very special episode of On Point EDC, and this particular segment is actually brought to you by Risk Candy Watch Club. Quick little uh, highlight there. I, what I try to do as far as sponsored content goes, I don't want to, of course, be reviewing those products in the content, right? Because it's just gonna seem really biased. I can't do a strap review that's, you know, being sponsored by the strap. <laughs> Um, manufacturer so what I try to do of course with my channels be as transparent as possible and just plug these guys because um, of course it does help keep the channel going to actually accept um, you know certain types of sponsorships and whatnot uh, so if you're a fan of the channel I'm sure you can appreciate the fact that there's a little bit more motivation to get content out there and get stuff made uh, so here you can see actually the Perlon is really quite gorgeous I think it goes really well with this uh, wonderful snowflake dial from Seiko. I have the full review. I uh, definitely check the channel for that. Um, but one of the nice things is here, you can see it almost has that, you know, when your screen is messed up and it's on a TV screen and it's snow, it almost is like that with basically the little breaks of white and black that almost have some navy blue tints to it. And I think um, it looks a bit bluish in hue. So that's what's going to be flopping around on my wrist while I talk about these two uh, particular pens here uh, so big shout out to Risk Candy Watch Club definitely check them out guys they helped bring this segment to you and today we're talking about two titans of the EDC pen world in the Parker Jotter and the Zebra F10701 <laughs> always mess that up so the 701 and the Jotter of course there are other iterations and whatnot of the Jotter uh, but here we have pretty much you know the very uh, standard uh, stainless steel this is actually the um, the gel um, insert versus the, the regular ballpoint here I've actually updated to a bit of a thicker um, point here uh, versus the fine point or, or medium point that comes in these but this is actually the updated version here as you can see that has the full metal uh, so this is now an all metal construction um, so these are actually two really good pens that um, you know they, they really kind of set the bar for EDC pens whether it's something that you know is going to be in your everyday carry in that it's going to be in the center console um, or your glove box of your car and you're always going to have this pen with you or whether it's with your notebook or inside of you know your button down shirt front pocket right um, it, it, these these have really set the standard and these are pens that you should really own before you go buying 50 60 hundred dollar plus pens um, from these really cool makers and I'm not saying don't do that. I definitely own a lot of those pens. Uh, I've spent, you know, upwards 80, 90, 100 bucks on like these cool machined pens um, and whatnot. And I love them and they're great um, and they're super robust and overbuilt. But these really are just the classics. These ones are really truly carryable, pocketable, usable, everyday pens. So it's not as much, um, you know, I'm gonna say, hey, which one is better for your use case? I'm gonna tell you the things I like about both of them and I and where I feel that they really excel. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's really up to you to see which one is kind of the better pen for you. And I would definitely love to hear some of your comments um, uh, down below as far as as how you feel about that. But uh, at this particular uh, ratio, there are some issues with the autofocus. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the zoom out here, and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so now we can get a better look. So let's go ahead and start out with the zebra pen here, the F, here we go, uh, the F701, and this is the updated model, full stainless steel. So there's some been some revisions, of course, here and here, um, and the clicker, definitely nice solid thud. Super smooth though, really, really nice. Um, you have great knurling. The length is very nice. It's, it's there's no real taper except for when you get down to the tip. So really nice and pen in in hand. Um, very pocketable, of course, with more of that kind of deep carry style uh, clip there. So really nice, and of course, if you need to, this thing can be a weapon of opportunity 
um, for you if you're in an area where you know you're not allowed to carry a pocket knife or anything like that it's good to have something like this that you could actually um, use in a self-defense case uh, as well if you want to be kind of on the tactical side but it's just being a general like very I'm left-handed so uh, uh, that's something that you know if you're wondering oh why is he holding the pen with that hand uh, that's the reason why the watch is on this hand and I hold the pen with this hand um, so the it's just it's beautiful ergonomics really nice the knurling isn't too sharp or anything like that it just gives you nice purchase and you know really great for writing drawing whatever you need to do so really big fan here of the uh of this zebra pen now when it comes to the parker you get a bit more form factor this thing is a lot lighter because it's a lot thinner um and then the click is you can hear that's a lot more audible as well Maybe part of that is it's because it's less dampened because it's a thinner case and everything like that. But this thing definitely feels more of a traditional pen. It has the tapers, very ergonomic, very smooth, fits in hand, really great. F great to write with. Um, of course, it's not gonna have the same level of grip, um, but with this brushed finish, it actually does grip uh, quite well. Uh, more than I'd say than some of their, you know, just purely polished finishes and looks really really handsome to me this is more of something to have at your desk or uh, with your notebook um, to, to write with versus something you're going to carry around as a possible weapon of opportunity uh, should so that opportunity pre present itself now here of course yeah it, it's all metal and whatnot this is definitely going to fly more under the radar so let's say you do go into an area where they're very strict even to the point where they're not letting you carry tactical pens. This might get waved or flagged as a tactical pen. This definitely wouldn't be. People are just going to see this as, as a nice pen. Um, you know, they might unscrew it to make sure there's nothing crazy inside of it and whatnot. Um, but from that standpoint, it's definitely something that's uh, great to carry. Great to fidget with. The clicks here, I'd say, are a lot more audible. Of course, it's, it feels like less precise, I guess you could say. In comparison here it's a lot smoother so, I mean when you compare something like this to like your basic Bic pen um, this is gonna feel so much more dialed in um, versus this is just gonna feel kind of like a nicer version uh, but still feel very much big clicky fidgety toy kind of feel to it um but definitely oh god this thing is handsome classic of course the, you know this thing uh dates back the design forever um definitely mid-century something that you know don draper um would be signing checks with uh on mad men so really nice uh, as far as the form factor the beauty here um you know, uh, so it, it kind of depends, you know, really for me, both of these pens are absolutely wonderful. Um, uh, price wise, you know, you can get these for like five bucks and they're amazing here. Um, it can be a little bit more expensive depending on kind of what you get. You're getting in kind of the teens, 20 bucks ish, um, you know, 15 to 20, depending on kind of what variant you get. Um, oh, and, and also where you get them. I'm sure you can get them cheaper. I'm sure there are places that sell them more expensive, but you know, at that price point, most people aren't really going to be necessarily like, oh, well, I don't want to waste my money. I, I could have five of these instead of like one of these. But, um, you know, it's 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 a small market. It's very entry level. So you can definitely own both or you can own one or the other or neither. Um, but I would suggest owning one of them at least or both of them because I think they're really great, especially before you start spending big bucks on these really cool, fancy, you know, full uh, titanium, stonewashed and um, with uh, great uh, kind of fun new click mechanisms and whatnot. Before you play with all those, um, for all you knife lovers out there, I'm a huge knife lover. So all, all that kind of fancy machining and that side of it really is something that I enjoy um, with 
with kind of my everyday carry, what I'm putting together, um, what I'm going to carry and uh, what I'm going to take whenever I go somewhere, what I'm going to leave in the center console um, or the glove box. You know, I kind of feel like I have little kits everywhere, um, you know, from my desk to my car to my pocket. There's just certain things that I carry with me or that I always kind of have on me and a pen is one of them. So, yeah, again, the jotter just really wonderful i'm not going to go into like the writing side there's definitely um sites for that and honestly with the amount of options you have for refills and preferences uh you know there's there's this isn't a fountain pen right it's it's a ballpoint this is a gel uh technically um but basically ballpoint pens there, there's not going to be a huge difference um as far as the way these are going to write uh they're both going to be quite smooth i personally prefer something that is going to be less sharp and feel a little bit more smooth so that's why i do have the bold tip there as you can see uh it's, it's quite round you can see like the big old um you know ballpoint there on the front um and here it's a little bit more, you know, in comparison, you can see it's it's a more precise tip there. But honestly, the way that they're actually going to function are quite similar uh, while writing. Um, and honestly, you probably don't have too many things to sign off these days. I sign my son's homework binder um, pretty regularly, but, you know, a lot of my notes are taken on the computer anyway. Uh, so... You know, I can be, I can make it a little bit of a luxury when it comes to which pen I'm going to use and, and kind of mix it up and make it fun. But the, the nice thing about this is, um, you know, it, it's, it's just a, a gorgeous design. I got to say form factor wise, uh, the, let's say the Parker is, is quite iconic. Um, and then the, uh, you know. The Zebra is more of a cult classic. You carry one of these, somebody else sees you with it, and they're like, oh man, it's, they, you, they know that you like it. Somebody who's carrying a Parker might not even care about pens. They might just have like looked up like a nice pen and like, oh, this is what, a, this is what you imagine a nice ballpoint pen looks like. Um, versus here, uh, you know, this really feels like an industrial tool and, uh, you know, really meshes with that edc vibe really well so let me know what you guys think in the comments below do you have either of these pens what are your thoughts of course you guys saw my whole segment uh, about um you know some fun edc pens you know quick little shot here um you know i did this whole thing about uh kind of my favorite bolt action pens uh and this thing's gorgeous but you know it's not cheap 90 something bucks um full titanium machined all in the US though this thing is is really a work of art but I think you kind of got to start here to learn to appreciate stuff like this when you have it in hand um, because it's just um, if you go from like a, a plastic pen to something like this it, it, there might be some sticker shock there You're just like what is it's just a pen um, but I think if you carry something like this and you learn to kind of appreciate those nuances and uh, little design cues and execution cues and, and and can really kind of get into the machining and, and the story of, of uh, you know, of your writing utensil that you're going to carry with you or leave at your desk. Um, this is a nice place to start the journey is here with these two pens. So again, if you guys like the video, please do hit like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks guys.